Hey everybody, I'm Sean. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to stitch out real quickly this onesie with this cute little horsey design on it with a little trial and error because you know we make mistakes. But I'm going to be using my Tajima side and let's get stitching. All right, so we're going to be using the 5.5 Mighty Hoop. And today I'm going to use the uh, adjustable freestyle fixture. This is the one that says 4.25 by 13, and it is adjustable. You can unscrew up under here, and you can slide this up and down. Um, you can use it for the sleeve hoop. Um, you can use it for a couple of the different uh, Mighty Hoops. So I'm going to be using it to help me hoop this onesie because it works out perfect for that. So I'm going to put this in here and get this back to where it needs to be. Okay. And then I am going to be using a fusible no-show mesh, very light stabilizer for this onesie. And the bumpy side is going to be facing the inside of the onesie here. Going to step there. I just tuck that under a little bit so that the magnets will fold over. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now this is um this is a Gerber six to nine month onesie. Okay, um, I'm just gonna slide it right over like this. And this here isn't very wide. It'll stretch a little bit, but it's not gonna stretch this onesie to where it's all out of place. So I do wanna make sure that it's nice and even. And this line going up the center here, if you can see that, this line helps you keep the onesie centered. So if you press it and draw your, I mean, you know, press an imaginary line, it will help you, but I was, I'm Russian. So <laughs> I'm like, let me just go ahead and eyeball this. Try to get it straight on there. And I think I have a good idea as to where I need it to be because this design is this big. It pretty much fits the hoop. So I'm going to want it to be a little bit towards the top. I think that too two finger space will work. So we'll try that. And if this doesn't stitch out good, got a couple of more onesies to get it right. So that looks good. Oops. Just gonna lift it a little bit just to release the magnets and then just gently wiggle it off. Cause you don't wanna snatch it because these little knobs up under here will pull, so you don't wanna do that. And then we're gonna put this onto the machine face in so that the bottom part of the onesie is facing you. Okay, so today we're gonna to be using the Tajima Sai eight needle embroidery machine. And let's put a full bobbin in here because I know I don't have a full bobbin. And that would just cause me to end up having to stop not that you have to have a full bobbin because this is a light design, but I know my bobbin was getting ready to run out. So let me just go ahead and stop that problem before it gets started. That bobbin in there. And now, like I said, we're gonna load this face forward so that the bottom part of the onesie is hanging out. And let me unsnap this so I can show you what I mean. This here part that kind of sticks out further, that's gonna be sticking out towards you and not towards the machine, okay? Now I do have this bar on here that is for the cap driver. I'm just gonna make sure I slide the onesie over that, but underneath the hoop, uh, the uh, bobbin arm. Is that what that's called? I don't know what that's called. I know what it's called, I just can't think of it right now. But anyways. I'm gonna trace because I always like to trace. And I'm gonna go back because I did do a test stitch so it's just ready really to stitch all over again. But I'm gonna go back as if I had just set, set up the colors, okay? So let's see if I could get that glare gone. I'm sorry about this glare. Maybe I should just turn the light out. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna hit set. 
I'm going to leave it on tubular one because tubular four is the four by four hoop and the mighty hoop isn't programmed into this. So whenever I use mighty hoops, I just leave it at tubular one on the Tajima side and I make sure I trace every design that I stitch on here. Okay. And then I'm going to hit set again. My design shows up. It is in the orientation that I wanted to stitch. It's going to be stitching with the head of the horse being at the top of the onesie. And so I'm going to hit set again. And now it's saying um, this part is basically where do you want to measure your trace based off of, if that makes sense. So where this red X is at in the center of the horse, that is telling the machine that I'm going to be tracing this off of the center of the horse. And um, we're going to hit next. And it's going to try. Uh, trace is executed mine is set up to where it will always trace when the design is first being stitched if i go all the way back to the beginning of the design it's going to trace because that's the way i have it programmed and so it's traced it does fit the hoop we're going to hit start and go ahead and get this stitching Okay, I was just playing with the height of the tripod, trying to get a better view of the stitching going on. And this isn't a terribly long stitch. It's only 6,963 stitches. So I'm just going to go ahead and let the whole thing stitch out and record it.
Red looks a little funky on that green.
Alrighty, so it is all stitched up now. So let's go ahead and get this off of the machine and see how it looks. Not too bad. Now I'll tell you, if you look at it this way, you could tell that the green could have been a whole lot nicer so that the white would actually show when it's stitched over it. And I'll tell you, um, I think the green started shredding and I think that it is because it's time to change that needle. Your machine will do things that you don't want it to do when it's time to make some changes and see how this, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'll pull it up. The green started shredding there and unraveling while it was going through the needle eye. Either that or I may not have the needle seated correctly. Um, if it's not at the right angle, it might it will uh, push the thread through incorrectly. So I'll try it again later. Um, I just wanted to do a stitch on this and see how it looked. For the most part, it's cute. I just gotta make sure that that stitching on that eye is gonna come out the way I really want it to come out. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and unhoop it. And I'm gonna try not to put my fingers in the mighty hoop. So, it's not terrible, it's just not as clean. I think I could probably use my small scissors and trim what I see, the imperfection. Yeah, there, I could trim that away. I don't know what happened there. And then I'll put some fray stop on the very back, just a little dab on the back to make sure that the green doesn't unravel anywhere. And then I will also cover the back with, I'm going to say it wrong, I think, cloud cover, cover cloud, cover soft. I forgot what it's called, but it's designed to, oh, that didn't stitch out very pretty either. huh? It's designed to cover over the embroidery stitching on the back so that it doesn't irritate the baby skin. So I'll tell you what, I don't like the way the back of this looks. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll put a different font in there and try that with a different font because I do not like all that, all that thread. So yeah, that's just something I don't like. I'll end up redoing this off video and I will show you what I changed the font to with a cleaner back. But I'm not going to just waste this one. This will just be a freebie. Life happens. And so with the cover soft, what I would do, um, leaving this inside out, I'll take this to the ironing board, press it just a little bit, put the cover cloud over it, press it again, and then trim it so that there's nothing extra hanging around. So I am not going to record the second stitching of the uh, next onesie that I'm going to do, but I will show you how it turns out because while I do like the way that sketch font looks because it's nice and thin to go along with the sketch horse. Um, 
I don't like the way that back looks. To me, that's just a little bit too much thread. So we've got to do something different back there. All righty, hold on, I'll be back. Okay guys, so at this point, I decided that I could not find a skinny enough font that I could find quick enough so I, I can get this project done, right? So I decided to go to Stitch Artist Level 3 is what I have and create a wording that would match the sizing that I needed because I really like the sizing of the letters in the phrase giddy up, but I couldn't find the satin stitch that was small enough that looked good with that small of a size. Remember, this is a 4x4 design size that we're working in, so I needed it to be small and stitch clean. I do not teach stitch artists. Um, if you're looking for someone who does teach it so that you can learn how to digitize, check out Lindsay over at Jack and Mac. You can find her on Facebook and on Etsy, at least at the time of this video, you can. Or look up Lisa Shaw. She has a ton of and brilliance videos and she is the stitch artist queen. So I decided that I would go ahead and create my own wording and go from there. Now, I did tell you all that I was not going to show you all the restitching of this second onesie, but I could not resist. So I did go ahead and record this, the steps all over again. Um, she stitched out or he stitched out a whole lot nicer. And I'm using the same technique, but what I did do was I re-threaded that green thread because the eye was looking a lot wonky and I switched out of course the font that or the letters that created the wording for giddy up and so now it's just stitching Alrighty, so here is the finished product. I do like the second stitch out a whole lot better than the first. The eyes seem a lot more crisp, although all I did was rethread the needle. The wording for Giddy Up, I like the way it looks a whole lot better as well. So that is it. It's nice and thin on this onesie and the inside doesn't have as much bulkiness to the threads either. So that will be easy to cover up with the cover a stitch is what I'm using actually from okay, all Okay guys, so you have got to love technology. I ran out of space or something as I was talking, but this is the final result of both of the onesies. This is the second one here that I do like a whole lot better. The eye the eye just it's a lot sharper 
And I do like the giddy up stitch with just the skinny satin stitch a whole lot better compared to the first one where the thread was messed up and bulky. And I did not do any real adjustments with the needle that had that green thread. I re-threaded it and pulled it all the way through past the line of where the um, shredded thread was and it finished that off. I do believe that I need to change my needles, but I will do that um, later. I got this done and I am happy with it. Plus, I like the placement a whole lot better on this one because it should have been a little bit higher. And so I did get it higher where on the first one, it's going to be a little bit farther down on the tummy. So for the backing, cover a stitch is what I was trying to say. Um, there are different brands out there that have different uh, names, but cover a stitch from allstitch.com is what I use. And it really, it, you just cut a piece off. This is, it comes on a roll. You cut a piece off. One side is bumpy and you'll place that onto the stitches on the back of the onesie or the shirt, whatever you're using it on. And you just iron it in place. Okay. And that keeps the skin from being irritated and rubbed up against. Okay. And now with this here, this is from mighty hoops. This is the, uh, the adjustable freestyle fixture. And it's a game changer for hoop and onesies, y'all. It really is. And it slides up and down so you can actually use it for hooping other things. Um, like I said, a lot of people use it for the sleeve. And this is it here on the other phone screen in case you're wondering exactly what it is. So that is it. And um, that's all for today. Okay, guys. So that is it. There is the final onesie. Absolutely love it. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment box. And until next time, keep taking care of yourselves.